What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm doing this voiceover in my car, so if you hear a bunch of background noise, I do apologize. Anyway, this is a pretty rare handheld, at least from the research I've done. This is the My Arcade Pocket Player of Contra and Super Contra. There's two games on here. Um, this game is different from a couple of their other releases. Uh, if you check out maybe like Mad Little Pixel, he's done a bunch of reviews on a bunch of different uh, products that this company has released. They've done a bunch of these little pocket players like this. A bunch of little mini arcade units. I think they, there's like an emulation thing. Um, even Metal Jesus did. It was like a thing where it's like a NES card on the bottom and an SNES card on the top, and it had controllers and a bunch of weird stuff they've made. None of it's like super quality uh, stuff or anything like that. But this thing, I was in Target. Look, guys, I went to go get that Mario, that Mario handheld that one everyone's talking about, right? Look cool for 50 bucks. Didn't see it in Target, but I saw this and I saw it for 40. I'm doing research, the thing takes AA batteries, and I didn't even know if it took AA's because I watched one of Mad Little Pixel's videos on a product just like this made by the same company, and it took AAA's, and I'm wondering, well, maybe the box is wrong. Maybe it doesn't really take AA's because I, you know, did bought, I bought a pack of batteries, as you saw, for this thing, uh, or you're going to see. I forget whether I showed them or not yet. Anyway, this thing, uh, the, the presentation, the boxing uh, of this thing is pretty nice. I will say that little flap right there. It looks nice. I do like the aesthetics of the handheld. That D-pad is, um, you know, at this point I've played it for a little bit. The D-pad could be better. Um, I really wish they would have went with like a SNES or an NES style D-pad or, you know, maybe something close to like a PlayStation style D-pad where it's not really a D-pad, but it kind of is. This is more like the Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn style of D-pad, which, you know, for platformers and stuff like that, for me, you know, I really prefer a SNES style of a D-pad. That way you know you're getting that precise movement, but you get little posters, little advertisements for other stuff that these guys are putting out. Um, the battery, the batteries in the back of this thing, it kind of reminds me of the way that the Game Gear, remember the Game Gear? I think it had like three batteries on each side or something like that. This kind of reminds me of the way that the batteries went inside of the Game Gear. But look, you got little uh, directions on how you're supposed to, like the, the, the buttons and stuff like that on the back. I think that's pretty cool. And it's for Contra and Super Contra. Um, nice little added touch there. Uh, this thing doesn't feel like a super high quality uh, device, but then again, it doesn't feel like the, the cheapest thing I've ever held. Um, but again, it's not like a super high quality product, but I do like the colors on this thing. I like that it's Contra branded. I like the care what Billy and like, or Lance and Bill, I guess <laughs> I forget their names, but um, yeah. And the sticker on the front, I'm going to pull that sticker off as you're seeing here but I'm gonna keep the sticker. I'm gonna keep all the packaging for this. Now, I did some research on this. Like I'm looking on like, tar I found this in Target. I'm looking on Target's website. I'm looking on Walmart's website. None for sale. I go on eBay. I did find an example of one of these things that sold and the product description or the way the title was listed was kind of weird. I found one of them for sale. It sold for like 70 or 80 bucks. And it was like a month or two ago. Um, maybe I, I, did I get this thing early guys? You know, is, is this thing yet to really, come out are they not coming out with these at all like I, I found this one at Target there's none for sale online like I don't know I bought this thing because I couldn't find any for sale I'm gonna be honest do I think this thing is worth $40 no you know, I don't think this thing is worth $40 at all but there are a couple of things that I find really interesting about this unit the first thing is that vertical screen if you look that screen is set up vertically um, for arcade games you know, it looks like it's kind of on its side, which is a good thing. What they call it, Tate vertical mode. I like that. You know, I really like that. And as you can see, there's a USB port on the top right there. I was thinking that maybe I could hook this thing up to my computer and move a couple of arcade ROMs, a couple shooters onto this thing. I didn't figure out how to do that. I didn't even, I couldn't even get my computer to, to register, register this thing, you know, discover it, you know, it couldn't read it at all. Uh, maybe there's a way for you to do that. I looked online, maybe I didn't look hard enough, didn't see anything on YouTube. Um, but there you can see the screen, you can pick between Contra and Super Contra. Of course, these are the arcade ROMs. So this is a little bit different than what you would expect from uh, what you played on the Super Nintendo, or the, the Nintendo, I'm sorry, not the Super Nintendo. That would have been really cool if they put Contra Street the Alien Wars on here, right? But uh, uh, yeah, these are the arcade ROMs, you know, they're 
I feel like they could control a little bit better the emulations, you know, not perfect on this, or maybe it's just that D-pad. Um, you know, I honestly don't have a lot of experience with the arcade ROMs from these games, so maybe they're playing exactly the way that they're supposed to. I really don't know. Um, but I would have preferred the NES ROMs, honestly, but I'm sure that's like a huge licensing thing or whatever. Or I don't know. I mean, these are Konami ROMs, so I, maybe it wouldn't have been. I don't know. But I do dig that vertical screen, and I do think if somebody could figure out a way to hack this thing or at least get into it, throw some ROMs on it. I'm sure you have to do something with the interface uh, to add whatever ROM you wanted. Maybe you have to go in there, add metadata, um, so that way you can at least see text of the game you're gonna play, I don't know. But if somebody could figure that out, I think that would be awesome. But yeah, for $40, don't recommend this thing, but if you're a collector and you want something rare and cool, my arcade contra unit, 40 bucks. Up next, this is the Switch Force Collection. It's for the Nintendo Switch, obviously. Uh, it's a collection of four games, and I, you know, if you got it on the eShop, I don't know if you would have to buy the games individually, or if they released individually and they just put them together in this collection. Um, this is one of those limited run games, and I did get this at Best Buy, and I have seen it at Best Buy for a while now. I just, I just was never really into it. I mean, it's a way forward game. They did River City Girls. That's a pretty good game they did recently. And uh, these games aren't too bad. I only played the first two and the third game, from, or maybe it's the fourth game from what I saw. It looked kind of like, the best way I could describe it would be the original Super Mario Brothers where you can actually see your character moving through like the whole level. But this had like different characters moving around together. I don't know, but it looked interesting. But anyway, the first two games, they're pretty cool. and. Uh, the best way to describe them would be environmental puzzlers with maybe 10% of the game is like a running gun shooter because you do get weapons and you do have to kill monsters or bad guys or whatever on screen and you're like a cop and there's like this uh, all the criminal girls or whatever the, the whatever they're in transport and the vehicle wrecked and you have to I guess get them back at least that's what it looked like for the first game uh, but yeah fun game 35 bucks Switch Force Collection for the Nintendo Switch. Okay, up next, this is a game I ordered a, a while ago. Well, maybe pre-COVID times. Ordered this a while ago. Got it recently. If I did include this in a video recently, I apologize. I don't think that I did. But anyway, I'll just tell you what it is. This is Chatting Parodius for the PlayStation 1, for the original PlayStation. I'd never owned any of those Parodius games for the Super Nintendo or, I guess, Super Famicom. I don't think we got any of those Parodius games out here in the U.S., but... Yeah, all the Super Famicom releases and PlayStation releases. I, I think there was like at least three for each system, at least that I've seen. There's probably more than that. Some of you guys probably know all about them. But, uh, they're you know, the games they played, just like the Gradius games, I've heard really good things about this one, uh, this one in particular. And this one's kind of expensive now. The reason why this one's cheaper is because it doesn't have the rear cover art, right? But there is the manual, and it does have the disc, and I just want to play the game. You know, on original hardware, although I'm playing this on a PS2 Slim. So I don't know if you would count that as playing on original hardware. I guess you would. I don't know. But yeah, this, uh, you know, I haven't, I have not played through this game fully at this point. But I, I do plan on getting to this. This is like 20 bucks, guys. So, you know, kind of an expensive game for the PS1 nowadays. But yeah, Chatting Parodius for the PS1. Okay, guys, this is a pretty interesting one. This is a game called Freedom Finger. On the Nintendo Switch now, it's a shooter, a shoot 'em up. You know, it's got a, uh, it's got a little bit of a story to it. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's kind of like a stoner humor and stuff like that. It's got, uh, it, it, I'll tell you, it's not my favorite uh, aesthetic. Uh, so I just, I just can't get down with the aesthetic of the game. But as far as the mechanics, like, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good shooter, I, and I do recommend it. Um, I got this one at pre-ordered. I, I forget how much it was, but uh, I think if you went on eBay, you know, you could probably get it from a reseller for probably no more than like 50 or 60 bucks. I would, I would, I would think. You know, I haven't looked or anything like that, but yeah, I recommend this one. I, again, I just, it's just not my favorite aesthetic. But it, it, again, if you like shooters and you want them physical, I assume most of you do. I'd say, yeah, go ahead and get the game. Um, I am sad to report today that I got, got the email that they are canceling the physical for Rolling Gunner on the Nintendo Switch. That that, that, that sucks, man. Um, so we're not going to get a physical or Rolling Gunner. Hopefully somebody else uh, picks it up doing a physical on it, maybe Limited Run or Red Art or one of them companies out there. Hopefully they do a physical of it because I've seen so many crappier games get physicals. Like Rolling Gunner really deserves a physical, you know, outside of the PC release. Um, and the Nintendo Switch, it, it deserves it. 
So maybe if we could rally around that game and create a little bit of a buzz, you know, maybe we can get them to. Uh, I think the name of the company was called like Physicality Games or something like that. It's, uh, I originally did a pre-order. They refunded like seventy dollars of the pre-order, and they refunded the last five today. So that uh, that, that sucks. I was chatting with one of my buddies about it, and he said they announced it a couple of days ago that they were gonna not do it. And they said the reason was is because they didn't get enough money in, uh, in, in pre-orders. Which I mean, they should just make the damn game and sell it. I mean, it would, the damn game would sell. Like, come on, man. And enough of that. Enough of Rolling Gunner. Yeah, one of the damn X Cave developers made that game too. I just want to point that out. The game deserves a physical, and it's a good game. It's a good shooter. It's a horizontal scroller. It's a horizontal scroller that plays more like a Dead on Pachi than uh, Death Smiles or you know Death Smiles too. So just uh, and you can see the cave influence there. So just uh, just just pointing that out. But. Enough of that. Anyway, back to Freedom Finger. You know, we get manuals with the super rare games releases, and this one's no exception. It's a nice manual. Um, they do better than than Limited Run on a lot of their manuals. But anyway, that is uh, Freedom Finger, a game I do recommend. It's not for like a crazy amount of money. If you can get it for like 50 or 60, I, yeah, I say go for it. Um, definitely. And you know, usually the resellers will get you the cards like you see here and the sticker. Most of them save that stuff together. And um, yeah, but anyway, Freedom Finger for the Switch. So here's a little assortment of cool stuff that I saw today. Here's like a little twister of the wind gathering all the leaves together into a little pile for a brief second. And I found this cool rock on a hill. Got a picture of that. And a short video clip of a beaver's dam when I went for a bike ride today. Probably going to be the last bike ride I go on for a while. But uh, I did watch that uh, that Game Chasers video that dropped today. It was like season one, like all put together. I, I'm, I've never watched season one of Game Chasers. So I, I, I watched the first couple episodes in that one video and... Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. You don't really see YouTube videos like that anymore. So uh, it's really cool seeing a lot of that older stuff. You know, I know a lot of you guys probably don't like them or don't watch them. I'm not a huge fan of them, but it is kind of cool to see the video game prices from back in the day. But look at that Beaver's Dam. That's so cool. As a matter of fact, my walking stick, I pulled personally out of a Beaver's Dam, I want to say maybe 10 years ago or so. And I got like shark teeth and different stuff that I found that I epoxied to my walking stick. Maybe one day I'll show you guys on a video sometime. But uh, yeah, you know, I've been busy at work, guys. Sorry I haven't been uploading as much, but I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to try to do what I can. Till next time, guys. Peace.